Hey, you beautiful people. All right, so this time uh, we want to go through how to uh, perform Ajax requests using jQuery. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to pull some data from an external website and bring it into our page. So I have this really, really simple page um, with the basics of jQuery, um, the ready function. There's the header, it's called it's a person, and there's a div placeholder. And I'm gonna name this placeholder, uh, just placeholder, just for the meantime. And it's basically gonna be a very empty page until we pull that information in. Okay, so this is the page. And what we wanna do is pull uh, from an API, from an external API using Ajax um, into this placeholder section here. All right, so we're gonna be using today an API I found online called, if I could get the name of it, it's called Random User Me. Okay, uh, so we'll be doing that uh, where we're going to pull from an external website called randomuser.me. All right, so here goes. So we already know that the page has been loaded once the ready function gets uh, executed. And um, to to run an Ajax function, which basically, uh, to run the Ajax function to pull that data that is in, um, we start off by using the dollar sign and then we put dot Ajax. Then we open up the, uh, it's a function of course, and in here uh, it takes an object. So the settings is actually an object in this case and not a function. So what we do here is this, that means an object and inside there we're going to place some keys so the first key that we likely want to place is the url and once you're using objects it's normally key and then colon and then the value that we want to place right and then of course a comma as well in this case the url is going to be this i'm going to copy and paste it in and because it's a string we'll put it in quotations right so we have the url we likely want to tell it the method. You don't have to put in a method. If you don't put a method in, it's going to assume it's get. All right. And um, in this case, the API is going to bring back what something called JSON format. If you don't know about JSON format, maybe I'll make a, a video about that. I don't think um, within the process I've made a video on that, but we'll work with it today. So don't be too concerned about it. We'll understand it hopefully by the end of uh, this video as well. Uh, which I'm trying to, of course, keep short, but it's, it could go on a little bit longer. Okay, so stay tuned. We're coming back here and we're going to say the data type. In this case, we specified. You don't always have to specify this. Um, so I want to show you when you don't specify, right? But there is the option to data type where you could specify JSON here. Okay, and um, that will automatically... Uh, whatever data has been pulled there, it's going to convert it into a JSON object. But we, uh, it's going to convert the JSON into an object. We'll see, but we don't actually need this, and we'll come back to this. Um, we likely don't have to use it right now. So every time you run the aid, when you run an AJAX request, right, what it does, um, you you have a few scenarios that's going to happen. You're going to have a success, a chance of success, right, and if that chance of success occurs. It should return some data. So this is what this function does, right? And then there's also, you don't have to put this in, but there's also a chance of error that can occur. And if that's the case, it's gonna have a function, it's gonna have the error message. And we're gonna write the error message to the console in case there's an error message. Now what we wanna focus on is of course the success area here. All right, so when we get, so when we get some success, some data, we want to see what that data looks like so we could console log that data. And this is basically, as I said, an Ajax request. This is the object within it. Each up in the object, these are the keys to, eat to the object, some of which are strings. In this case, two of these are strings. Um, success and error is actually uh, a function. And that's the versatility of, have, of using JavaScript. And the more you use JavaScript um, over time, you will realize that an object um, how well how forgiving JavaScript is as well as um, how it's able to reference between strings and functions and you can place functions anywhere and that's kind of cool about it but again you have to know how to mentally work with it the more you use it the more it gets easier it looks complicated but it's not I, I assure you the more you use it it's going to become second nature all right so let's see if this code works 
So I'm going to save this code. And I'm going to go to the page and I'm going to open up the inspector because um, nothing is going to change on the page. But what we did was we console logged some of this, right, for, for the success or the error. So let's see if we get any um, any results. Oh, we did get results. Awesome. So we did get um, a results object. It has it seems to have one array. I can't really read that properly. Um, but there's an info key right and then there's a results key okay so the results the actual results uh, is a key as well and that has an array so we'll make sense of this okay so the first one is it's actually showing you um some of the info so they, it returned one result it returned one page and i don't know what the seed is and the and and the version we don't really need to know what that is so we'll safely ignore that and we'll just go to the results, which is one array. So the results has one item. So the results is an actual array. It has one item. And that item is index zero. So usually that's by default, right? Each array is going to have, it's going to start at zero. And if there's more, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So in theory, what we should be able to do is filter this now. All right. So in this example, we're going to take data we realize that data has a results array. So we should be able to console log data.results. Assuming this is an object, this should work. We should be able to just filter out. And if I refresh the page, what I should have now is the array. So it's pointing to the array and there's zero. So if I were to check the length of data.results, I should get one. Let's have a look at that. Okay, as you see, it outputted one. So it means that it's an array and dot length. Dot length works. So it actually shows you what it is. So in this case now, what we still have is the results. We don't really need the length, so we could just clear that out. I was just showing you guys this. So basically, you can go through each item in the results. So in this case, it's only one, but I'm going to do the for loop just to show you how our for loop is done. So you could go for var i for index equals zero. i is less than data dot results dot length because length would be one. So this i would always be zero, which is less than one. And in which case, i plus plus is to iterate through it. So it's going to just reach one, right? So basically, it's going to output here. We're going to output here. Let's say var. Um, you could use let as well, but I use var most of the times. So you could use uh, var item. Or we could say person, right? We could say person, var person, uh, or user. Let's, say, let's call it user. Var user is data.results i. And so i is going to change. In this case, i is basically going to stay at zero. And um, it's not going to go to one, two, three, because it's going to satisfy this, this, which is i is always less than one. So it will only be zero. And there we want to output. Let's see what user looks like. So now we have data within that user object. Let's refresh it. And as you can see now, we have the data for the specific user, all right, um, which is nice. So now we have an example of what we can do. Uh, let's start to use this data now and let's output it into at least one. We're going to change the placeholder. Let's change the placeholder into something. So let's look at the data. For example, we have a name. We have a first name and a last name. So it might be nice to start off with creating a container for the first name and the last name. So let's do that. In our HTML, we have this placeholder, which we're going to ignore for the time being. And instead, let's create here div class first name, which is going to store the first name. And then let's go for, we'll copy this and put last name, right? Let's go back and just double check the um, where this is located. So this is on the name. We have first and last. All right. Name, first, last. Okay. So if we go through this user here, 
we can do this. On the first name, we could set the HTML. You could, I believe you could use text as well, but I'm going to set that as HTML. User dot, in this case, it's going to be dot name, because this is the key, dot name, right? And then inside of there, there's first and last. So in this case, we're going to use dot again first. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing, similar, with the last name. So in this case, we change this to last name and we use last. And we save that. And so for every user, it's going to add it into the placeholder. Let's refresh and see if it works. Oh, wonderful. So now we have this guy, hopefully it's a guy. And every time we refresh, it's going to change the name. And let's get rid of the placeholder, the original placeholder. We don't need that anymore. So now what has happened is every time we load this page, it's going to call in the background, the API, as you can see on the network, you see it's calling the random user.me API. It's pulling the response, which is this JSON response. And then under the success, when we get this data, which is under the success function, we take this data and we go through each user that is returned and we modify, in this case, we modify the, um, placeholders to to have that data in it. Now, I believe that we could have also used, as I said, we could have used text. I'm going to just double check and make sure that works. All right. If that works, then we could just continue using that. Okay. Yep. It did. Okay. Good. So it did work. All right. But there's some much more, there's some more data that we want to use. And so let's go back to the console. Let's have a look at what else is available. So one of the things that is, you know, a bit nice is that there's also a picture available that we can use. So I'm going to try to use the picture and we'll see what is the size. Let's use the thumbnail. Okay. So on the user, it will be user dot picture dot thumbnail. All right. So let's see if we could display an image. Okay. Now, uh, we just display the image above. We'll call this picture. Okay. And this, a picture normally has a source, but we're going to leave that just like that for the while. Let's see what happens. It should probably show a broken image. It didn't show anything. Okay, that's good. All right. So now we have, well, now we want to do is add a picture. Okay. So in this case, we, we point to the picture and we're going to use attribute. Hopefully that will work. I didn't test it beforehand, but it should work. Attribute is source and user dot name sorry user dot picture dot thumbnail let's see if that works yay okay awesome so what you saw me do there i'm going to explain now to you so if you look at this html here this is in order to show this is a different uh, element compared to the div element so the div element would hold it could hold more than text, but we need a particular element called image, IMG, in order to display a picture. And what we did was we labeled this picture by the, uh, by the class, basically, right? So the class is picture, and that's what we're pointing to here. Now, by default, a picture usually has a, has a source, right? If it's, you know, if it's just basically HTML, it's going to have a source, and the source would be equal to whatever the, whatever .jpeg or PNG or whatever, and that's supposed to point to a valid picture. In my case, because it's we're going to do we're doing this dynamically, I left that out. So basically, it would have created an empty picture, so it did not it did not uh, display anything on the screen. So if I take off this picture uh, line and I reload, notice there's no there's no picture there, even though there's an element. So if we look at it, if we inspect, we should see the image class picture, but there's nothing. There's no source. And because of that, there's nothing displayed. And then what we did was we added the attribute SRC, right, with the URL. So this has the URL of the actual picture. And when we did that, look at what's going to happen here. We're going to reload. You notice a picture was added. And in this case, we see source equal and the picture. 
Does that make sense? I hope that it does make sense. Now you could do a, you know, you could format it and make it look cool and nice. Like for example, maybe um, we could add some CSS. I don't know if this is gonna work, but let's see if it works. We could do things like um, CSS, border radius. Let's make it uh, 50 px. And what this should do is add a border radius to this picture. Yep, and we made it into a circle. And that's what that border radius does. So as you can see, you could do a lot of things. And uh, basically, we didn't we didn't touch on all of the different items, but you just have to go through every single item, basically, and uh, create your own placeholder for it. And then use this code, right, to modify it or to, to add it dynamically to um, to the body of the web page. And that is pretty much uh, how you go about uh, doing Ajax. Um, in this case, we used get. It's a, it's a specific method we use, which is the standard method for retrieving data. But you could also read up on posts as well too. In this case, we didn't post any data. We only, we only had to pull data into our, um, our algorithm. Um, but maybe if you want to see another video where I do that, just let me know in the comments below and I will try to make a video that does that, but I'll have to create um, an endpoint in order to receive data, to post data to the server instead of retrieving data. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for viewing. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.